DevOps Bulletin, and I'm talking to Martin, who's been name checked a few times by Stefan for having one of the most watched YouTube videos. Um, so you give talk a talk about machine learning with TensorFlow without a PhD. Yes. So I expect that you get asked a lot about TensorFlow, and specifically, maybe we could just introduce it a bit before I ask you more about use cases. TensorFlow is a, is a Python library uh, that allows you to build neural network models. And uh, it's a library that we designed mostly for our research teams uh, so that they can build anything that comes out of the lab could be built in TensorFlow. And uh, the second design goal is for it to be production ready because we didn't want uh, production people to take a model from the lab and say, oh, this is horrible. I have to rewrite it before I put it in production. So these are the two main goals of TensorFlow, uh, build the next you know, innovation and, and then ship it. So you can uh, use it if you're a researcher, but you can also use it in production. Yes, and uh, there is actually an intermediate between those two. It's, it's, it's us, it's developers, normal software developers. Uh, and more and more software developers are jumping on this, this bandwagon because uh, machine learning and TensorFlow and deep learning solve real problems in the enterprise. Uh, at Google, I'm seeing it uh, because outside of the research teams, TensorFlow is used in thousands and thousands of teams. And uh, for that, uh, we've been pushing on the TensorFlow team to add a little bit of higher level APIs to make it easier for non-researchers to build the models that we need. And, and now finally in TensorFlow 1.4, which has just been released, uh, as a developer, I'm finally happy with the APIs. I can work with this. How easy is it to get started with the TensorFlow APIs for a developer, for a non-machine learning expert? Well, I think it's roughly the same difficulty as starting with a new language. As a developer, you are kind of used to that, learn a completely new language. So think of it as the same kind of learning curve. You will have to, new, to learn a couple of new concepts, but at the end of the day, once you're proficient in these new concepts, it's like any other field of computer science. You are piecing blocks together that you as an engineer know that are working well, and you know what are the standard or the state-of-the-art solutions for given problems, and uh, uh, you manage to assemble a neural network or a full solution uh, out of those blocks, which, which responds exactly to the problem that you're solving. Is it advantageous to learn Python first and then to explore TensorFlow, or can you Yes, please spend 10 minutes learning Python. That's uh, approximately what it takes. I love Python for that. I do code labs where people, sh uh, TensorFlow code labs, where people show up, they've never done any Python at all, and they can still go through the lab. Python is great for that. I have to admit, I do have a slight bias towards Python. Um, Maybe. I do <laughs> like Python. Uh, although the difficult thing I found as a Java developer learning Python was getting my head around the arrays, particularly if you use some of the Python libraries like NumPy. And TensorFlow has some data structures that are completely new as well. Uh, TensorFlow tends to emulate exactly what NumPy does, so that people who know NumPy are immediately very familiar with how it works in TensorFlow. And uh, uh, actually, TensorFlow has this uh, deferred execution environment where when you use TensorFlow, uh, you build a computation graph. TensorFlow needs this graph to do all the automation that it does. Um, but when you run this graph and obtain values, real values, those are real NumPy values. So it's, it's fully compatible. Once you have a, a number or an array that comes out of TensorFlow, it's a NumPy array and you can you can plug it into any library that supports NumPy, which is basically all scientific computation libraries on, on Python. How much of the challenge of using TensorFlow is getting your head around um, the library or the framework? Is I know there? most of the challenge is to understand the underlying concepts. Because the library now is, is pretty well packaged, and all the concepts that are useful usually are represented by one function in TensorFlow. But this function might encapsulate a pretty complex concept uh, that has a scientific foundation and that you, you need to learn first. And that's precisely why uh, I'm doing these TensorFlow without a PhD sessions, to give 
people this perspective of what is behind this function, how does it work, without necessarily going all the way into the equations, but to give them the engineering perspective. So that as, as a software engineer, they know how to use it, they know what it does, and they know how to apply it efficiently. That's what we need as computer in, in software engineers. Completely. Um, can you tell me something about ML Engine? Um, yes, so ML Engine is uh, on Google Cloud Platform, the TensorFlow execution environment. Uh, it's a pretty simple service where you submit TensorFlow training jobs. Uh, what is, uh, uh, so I, I used to have a discrete GPU on my machine, uh, and for small models, actually, I think that's better, but for bigger models, uh, I tend to, uh, to, uh, to send the jobs to, to ML Engine simply because I can send multiple jobs at, at once and so they will execute in parallel or be queued, but I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about shutting instances down. And one feature that is super useful for me as, as a developer is hyperparameter tuning. All of the magic of training a model is finding the best parameters. And uh, with hyperparameter tuning, you can uh, just give it ranges and ask the system to find those parameters for you. It will run m multiple trials, but it's, it's done in a, in a smart way. It's, it's called Bayesian optimization, uh, so that the first trials inform it on how to search for the best parameters in the, f in the subsequent trials. And, uh, and I, I couldn't work without it now. Uh, so more into the kind of networks that you can build. Can you build? Um, so Obviously, you can build standard feed-forward neural networks with TensorFlow. Is there support for convolutional and recurrent neural networks that you might use for time-sensitive time series data with recurrent so neural networks and yes. image processing for convolutional neural networks? Yes, there is a layers API, which has various um, neural network layers that you can use, a dense layer, a convolutional layer, and so on. So for convolutional layer layers, uh, for convolutional neural networks, that works great. And there is a specific uh, a recurrent neural network API, uh, which which is uh, I find it fantastic. In in the session, we've been able to uh, recreate Google Translate in literally ten lines of code, and it, it's ten lines of code without cheating. It's it's not uh, instantiate Google Translate. <laughs> we are actually building the full model from scratch using the sequence to sequence a API with an attention wrapper, and uh, this was built by by Google Research so that they could experiment in a very easy fashion different architectures for building those uh, recurrent neural networks models. And I, I find this API to be really, really nicely put together. What's your favorite part of TensorFlow and using TensorFlow? Uh, well, today, um, the estimator API, which encapsulates the model, and allows you to simply launch it on ML Engine, for instance. Um, it has just been redesigned. Uh, and uh, I have to admit, it wasn't great before. But with this redesign, they really got it right. It's, I write exactly the lines of code I, I want to write as a software developer without any craft and without falling through the, through the cracks into, into stuff that I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I really love it now. It's TensorFlow 1.4. I'm finally productive with it Thank as a software dev. Thank you. Thank you very much.